What's up guys and welcome back to another eBay miniature rescue. My name is Casey and this week we're going to be taking some old used miniatures and turning them into shadow box wall art. In this episode of eBay Miniature Rescues, I wanted to take the time to do something a little more artistic with these models that I keep getting. Normally on this channel, I like to strip a miniature down, repair it, repaint it, kind of make it new again. But this week, we're just gonna take some old goblins and one of their spiders and make a neat little scene with them. So in this phase, I wanted to draw out a rough design of how the piece will probably end up looking. You know, I'm not trying to get it to scale or anything, I'm just trying to get rough dimensions of the shadow box so I can get the best idea of how the finished piece will look. The plan is to create a scene in which two unsuspecting goblins, who are on the hunt for gold, stumble onto something shiny in a cave. And what they don't know is that something sinister awaits them. So I went through a bunch of boxes of bits and I ended up grabbing out some squigs and some trogoths. Now there are some really nice mushrooms and kind of cave-like bits that would be perfect to fill out this scene. I ended up picking out a handful of mushrooms, a nice dangly spider, and some stalactites that could hang from the ceiling. Now I cut all these bits from the sprues and I placed them on my rough sketch just to get an idea where I would like to place them. Really, what I'm trying to do is just solidify the idea in my head so that when I go to implement all these things, I know pretty much where everything needs to go. Now that we have our plan pretty much laid out, I'm gonna transfer these, you know, large shapes onto a piece of styrofoam board. Now I'm using pink foam, which is an insulation. You can get it at a hardware store for pretty cheap. And it cuts really well with a foam cutter. Now I got this foam cutter probably four or five months ago and I've been really wanting to use it to do some sculpting. So I plugged it in, heated it up and seriously, the thing just works really well. Now I'm gonna take those foam pieces that I cut out and just kind of roughly fit them in to the shadow box. Then I'm gonna start to cut away at the sides just to kind of give a little more shape and texture. And then we're gonna take that outside and paint it. Lately, everything's trembling. All my shelters are opening. There were a couple of reasons why I decided to use a black spray paint rather than something else. Now, spray paint is much cheaper than airbrush primer, and using a spray paint on foam can give you a very quick and dirty rock texture. The solvents in spray paint will eat your foam. If you shoot your foam fairly lightly, you know, you have a light hand when applying that paint and from fairly far away, you can control how much that takes away. In this case, I went pretty heavy in some areas and lighter in others. And that way, you know, I got a real nice variety of textures that really makes this foam look like cave walls. After that foam was dry, I came in with a mixture of PVA and sand just to kind of fill the gaps between each of those rock pieces. Now, before we get into any of the real fun stuff, I need to send out a huge, huge thank you to the hobby shop Matrix Cards and Games out of Redding, California. Alan and Terry, who run that shop, which is exquisite, by the way, if you are in the area, sent me this static grass applicator along with a nice selection of different static grasses. Now, seriously, this thing is fantastic and it makes this project work. Finally being able to have static grass actually stand up on end 
is kind of an amazing feeling. So if you can get your hands on a static grass applicator or even build one, there's some awesome tutorials out there. I definitely recommend trying that. And you know, we're in this kind of crazy time where all these awesome shops have been closed. I would just ask that everybody look into your local hobby shop and try and throw them a few bucks because it's something that would definitely help them. I did run into a problem with the backing from the shadow box. Originally, I was thinking of using it as kind of a nice background. It's black, not really showing anything. But after laying down some of the materials, I quickly realized that this wasn't going to work at all. So I removed the backing and put the rest of my sand and PVA mix down on that backing board. And I painted it the same as the rocks. Now because every one of these types of projects is a little bit different and materials are different from table to table, I'm not really showing a ton of the painting. Now the way that I did these rocks was fairly simple. I just used brown, black, and green ink and just kind of randomly shot them through the airbrush on the rocks. And that's really how I got this look. I think really what I'm trying to get at is if you are going to do something like this, use what you have on hand and just try and be as creative as possible and see what you can make with the used models and whatever paints and material selection you have around you. Honestly, I think you'll be pretty surprised at how creative you can actually be, even with a limited amount of, you know, different things that you have available to you. You know, you could make these rocks any color you wanted. This cave could look like anything that you wanted it to look like. As long as, you know, you're getting creative and you're getting stuck into a project that motivates you, I don't think there's any way you can really go wrong. I even went as far as to not actually show the models, and partially that's because of the reasons I just said, but also because I have plenty of tutorials on this channel about painting goblins just like this. So I'm going to link those in the description and right here on the screen. This is something that changed a little bit from my original plan. Now I found this dangly spider and I thought it would be kind of cool to have this kind of like a red herring almost like this spider that's dangling and they think it's dangerous but there's actually a giant spider at the end of the tunnel. But I thought it made even more sense for them to essentially have killed that spider and think that they got away with something. The last thing I'm going to do before pretty much permanently sealing this diorama up is install some LED lights. I wanted this cave to be alive with little bugs as well as kind of hidden secrets all over the place. So I drilled through the backing and I shoved those LED lights through those holes and I glued them in. Some of them I left bare and some of them I covered up with some moss and grass tufts. All in all, a really good day's work and a really cool display piece for my hobby space. So I'm extremely happy with the way that this turned out. I honestly didn't think it was going to kind of get to this point near the end. You know, things just kind of fell in line and it was super fun to do. The really awesome thing was I was able to spread out a little bit where I've been a little constricted in the past. You know, I'm building this new hobby space and I was able to finally use the room even with a limited amount of furniture to kind of get all of my materials and just set them out and really go through everything. And I find that to be a really good way to kind of pick and choose what I want to do in order to just be as creative as possible. I also wanted to thank a subscriber named Flora Font. You may have heard that name before. She sent me a few different things that I've painted up on this channel. 
she sent me these awesome goblins. Now these are like the old night goblins, the ones with the little metal shields and you know, funky little fat faces. And honestly, they're fantastic models and they fit perfectly in this diorama. Anyways, guys, I hope that this inspired you in some way to try something a little bit out of the box or, you know, in a box, in a shadow box, as it were, and just kind of flex those hobby muscles and see what you can do. Just add a little bit of spark to your hobby space. As always, thank you for joining me on another eBay Miniature Rescue. If you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. What do we got? There we go. So I got this in the mail not too long ago. I bought it off of eBay for 20 bucks. And normally this model is a $50 model and I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called, but it is so cool. It's so cool. So hopefully I'll get to painting this pretty soon. It definitely needs to be stripped down as the paint is quite thick. So something to work on, but it's really cool. I also got this guy for, what was it? $5. I mean, these things go for, for pretty good price on eBay. So I definitely want to work on this. The paint job is actually pretty nice too. Like there's some good texture going on on this kind of hooded cloak on top. And you know, the ethereal bits kind of need a little bit of touching up, but I think this is gonna be a really good jumping off place for this particular model. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, working on some of these models, expanding out into a bigger space and just seeing what happens. You know, I'm, I'm pretty excited for the future and honestly, I'm just glad that you guys are along for the ride. I appreciate each and every one of you and I will talk to you later.